Well, I'm Destiny Spaeth, and I'm a senior at South High School in Fargo. I'm 17 years old. I started drinking when I was probably 14 years old because I was hanging out with an older crowd, and that's just what they were doing. And I've been around it since I was little because both my families always drinking. So um, I've been around it, and just not exactly peer pressure, but more of curiosity led me to start drinking. And it was just, it was acceptable. It was socially acceptable in my family to be drinking. Um, maybe not as such a young age as when I started drinking, but there was always alcohol around at family reunions and Christmas and Thanksgiving, and it was just a norm. I would sneak, I know I would sneak beer out of my dad's cooler or something like that. Uh, it wasn't as frowned upon as in some other families. It was more just the kids are drinking kind of thing. It was not seen as a very big deal as long as we were being safe and um, just behaving ourselves as well as we could. So I was going to a school football game and I decided to drink before. It wasn't the first time that I drank before a football game. It was just, I don't know, the game always seemed a little bit more exciting when we had been drinking. So I drank before the football game and went to the game. I was having a really good time and you know, our team was winning and I was really getting into it, cheering loud and all of a sudden a boy sitting next to me who I recognized from school, um, he got really pale in the face and I, I asked one of his friends what, what was going on and he said, well, he drank before the game and I was like, this is, this is strange because he's looking very sick and all of a sudden he puked everywhere and everybody just started like, freaking out and screaming because there's vomit everywhere and just automatic instinct. I just grabbed the kid, put his arm around my shoulder and a couple other girls helped me bring him up the stairs um, of the stadium and we brought him to a small room at the convention center and there were paramedics there and they were taking care of him and my school resource officer came to talk to me. Just We had a good relationship. He recognized me from the school. And he came to ask me what was going on. And I tried to explain to him, but it was clear to him that I had been drinking too. And so he took me into the small room where the boy was. And the paramedics were working on the boy because he had um, like quit responding to any sort of you know, stimulation, they were trying to talk to him and, you know, give, trying to have him give like a physical response. And so they kind of, they put me off to the side and the boy uh, just was completely non-responsive. His eyes were closed and the ambulance had to come and they were like trying to wake him up and I, I was get, starting to get scared because they were threatening to put a breathing tube in his nose. So... I went over to the boy and I started smacking him and I'm like, you gotta wake up, you gotta wake up. But the paramedics came and they put him on a gurney and they wheeled him out and then it was my turn to deal with everything. And the school officer, you know, told me what was gonna happen and a couple of my principals from my school came in. So it was just, it's a really stressful experience to be going through that and have, you know, administrators sitting next to me trying to, you know, keep me calm and as the center of attention, but not in the good way. And they called my parents to come and pick me up. And after that, it was just, it was miserable because my parents were so disappointed in me. And I just, I lost all of their trust. And it just, it took so long to regain that trust. Like, if I could take back that night, I would for, you know, the two or three months that it took for my parents to fully trust me again. I received a minor in in consumption and I was put on nine months of unsupervised probation and I had to attend an alcohol class three times um, over the variation of three weeks and not only was it just the criminal charge but it was just the effect that it had on my parents and my relationship with my parents it was just so not worth it. Well, for the first month I was grounded, of course. No car, no friends, everything like that was taken away. Um, after I received my privileges back, it was 
on a very limited basis. You know, my curfew was a lot earlier. It was, they were calling me a lot more, you know, checking up on me, making sure I was staying out of trouble. And it was just more of a hassle because I had to keep in contact with them and they had to know who I was with, what I was doing, when I would be home. And if they didn't approve, then my plans were done and I needed to come home. So it was, it was a stressful period. I had to go to the alcohol class with one parent at each time. My dad went with me the first time and my mom went with me the second two times. And we would watch videos on the dangers of alcohol and um, the dangers of drug use since there were um, kids in there with drug charges also. And thanks to that class, it opened up a lot of communication with my parents because each night we'd have to go home and you know, do a little homework assignment, and it, it opened up communication a lot, so I was able to learn a lot more about my parents, which was, it was interesting just to hear stories about their childhood and, you know, how they wanted things to be different for me, like all the parents say, you know, they want things to be different for their kids. So the class was, I actually thought it was really interesting, and I learned a lot more about the dangers of drinking, and I had to reevaluate what I was doing because I was putting myself in really risky situations. After that class, I realized how dangerous it really was. The main risks that I realized I was taking would be the binge drinking. You know, not, not drinking for a buzz, but when we were drinking, we were drinking to get drunk. And I realized how dangerous that was, and there were videos that we needed to watch on these parents that had lost children to binge drinking, and just the effects that it has, and you don't, you don't know what your limit is, you know? You, you can reach that point, but you could already have alcohol poisoning. And realizing how dangerous it really was and that kids really do die from this was just a slap in the face. Like, I can't believe that I was doing that all the time and like anything could have happened to me or one of my friends. And another thing that I learned from the class was a lot of like the effects of like drinking and driving. And there was a video that we watched and four out of five kids that were in a vehicle one night died because the driver had been drinking and we've never thought twice about getting in a car with somebody who had been drinking so now that's something that I really steer clear of is avoiding somebody who has been drinking and they decide to drive. With my life now you know college is going to be coming up in a year I need to start preparing for my life and these stupid consequences you know of getting caught drinking is just gonna hold me back. And like, my life is starting now, you know, I need to be thinking about a career and, you know, and 10 years from now I wanna have a family and I, I can't let stupid mistakes of, you know, drinking and getting caught drinking and being in bad situations, I can't let that hold me back. And because I have a lot that I wanna do in my life. And by participating in drinking and getting caught, that's just, it's holding me back from what I want to do.